tense. Grammar rule number three, tense. This is page 37 of the manual. Page 37 of the manual. So what is tense? Tense is what happens when you study for the SAT. Uh, kidding, that's not the tense we're talking about here, obviously. Uh, the tense that we are talking about here is the time at which a verb's action happens or happened. Uh, so remember, we already talked about one verb rule. We talked about subject-verb agreement. This is yet another verb rule where when we look at a verb, we have to know when that verb happened um, and if the verb is in the right form for when the verb happened. So in English, most of the time we can look at our verbs and tell almost immediately when the action happened. We can also look for uh, time clues in the, uh, in the sentence that will help us determine when the action happened. But in examples one and two, notice that the two sentences are exactly the same. The only differences are or the only difference is the verb, the lived versus the have lived. So we have to ask ourselves, what does the difference in form of those two verbs tell us about this person living in California? Well, in the first sentence, the lived, in example one, the lived is in the very simple past, just the regular old simple past tense. So what that lived means is that the person lived in California for six years and no longer lives there. The living in California is done. Versus example two, when we read, I have lived in California for six years, this is a different past. We're actually gonna end up calling this the still going past. There's a, a, a more technical name for it, but we're gonna call this tense the still going past. Why do we call this the still going past? Because this person is still living in California. When somebody says, I have lived in California for six years, we know from the form of that verb, have lived, that this person is still doing that action, is still doing the living in California. So that is your little introduction to tenses and how the form of a verb will tell you when an action happened. Uh, what about examples three and four? I would go ahead and take a look at those right now and see what you can tell about the time at which these actions occurred based on the forms of the verbs. Pause the video if you want to do this on your own and try to articulate on your own. In example three, we have Renee cleaned the inside of the car while I washed the outside. So what do we have here? Well, we have something actually very simple, uh, similar to example one, we have a simple, simple past action, a simple past tense verb. Renee did this action, the cleaning, while I did this action over here, the washing. This while indicates that these two verbs happened at the same time and they both, based on the form of the verbs, we can tell they both happened in the very simple past. They happen and they're done. In example four, though, now we have this had before the cleaned. And we also have this time clue right here. And we also have, again, this washed over here. In this sentence, it's not a simple relationship where the cleaning and the washing are happening at the same time. This by the time tells us that this action over here happened first and this action happen second. If we were to lay this out on a little timeline, what we would see is that Renee had cleaned by the time or before I washed. So the washed is in the simple past and the cleaned is in what we're going to end up calling the before the past. Before the past. And again, there is a technical name for that tense, which maybe or maybe not we'll discuss in a minute. Um, but that's exactly what's going on here. We have two actions in the past, the cleaning and the washing. One of them, the cleaning, is happening first, and the other, the washing, is happening second. The washing is happening in the simple past. The cleaning is happening before the past. So again, we can look at 
a sentence's verb, we can look at any time clues that accompany the verb, and we can usually tell uh, fairly clearly when the action of the verb occurred. Um, on the SAT, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to determine, based on all of the clues in the sentence, whether our verbs are in the right formation for the time at which they occurred. The tip-off clue, go ahead and write it down, is, you guessed it, underline verbs. If we see underline verbs, we know that ETS is possibly testing tense. Remember, they could also be testing uh, subject-verb agreement. That was our uh, other rule that verbs could indicate. So underline verbs. Um, you need to do the two following things. Uh, the first thing you should probably do when you see an underlying verb is determine if, oh, pardon me, not if, um, you want to determine what tense the verb is in. And remember, you can do that just by looking at the verb and how it's formed and what words come in front of it. You know, if you see uh, had eaten versus ate versus eats, you know that these are all three different uh, time frames. These are all three different tenses indicated by the form of the verb. So that's the first thing you want to do, determine what tense the verb is in. And the second thing that you want to do is you want to look for other verbs and slash or time clues to determine if underlined verb this guy gets a little long here so I'm going to continue down under here is in correct tense. So you want to look for other verbs and or time clues to determine if the underlined verb is in the correct tense. What do we mean by time clues? Well, glad you asked. Right here we have some examples of visual tip-off clues that would serve as time clues. And time clues can indicate past action, they can indicate present action, future action, they can indicate chronology or order or simultaneous action. There are tons of time clues. These, this is not uh, an all-encompassing list. There are other time clues, but these are just some examples of things that if you were to see these words in a sentence and you were to see an underlined verb, very good possibility that ETS is testing uh, verb tense. Look at example five. Go ahead and do it on your own. Press pause on the video if you would like to attempt it on your own. Okay, example five. So, whenever Tariq learns or Tariq learns a new method in art class, he sought out the work of sculptors who have used it with success. So, notice that we have our underlined verb. It looks like the underlying verb is in the simple past. He sought out the work of sculptors. That's the simple past. So that was our first job to determine whether the uh, verb, what tense the verb was in. Once we determine the verb is in the simple past, we have to ask ourselves, should it be in the simple past? So we looked for other, sometimes non-underlined, frequently non-underlined verbs, and time clues and we actually have both in this sentence we have a time clue and we have another uh, non underlined verb so this time clue remember whenever is like a or is exactly a simultaneous action time clue it tells us that two things are happening at the same time whenever Tariq learns something he does something else at the same time well learns is in the uh, pardon me the present tense so these two, that was supposed to be simple past, these two verbs should be in the same tense and they are not. One is in the simple present and one is in the simple past. So this simple past needs to change to match that present tense verb. We should say whenever Tariq learns a new method in art class, he seeks out the work of sculptors 
who have used it with success. So again, what we had was a simple past tense verb, the sought out. We had a time clue and a present tense verb. The time clue indicated that our two actions should be happening at the same time. Therefore, this second verb sought out should match this first verb learns. Uh, we have to change this simple past tense verb to a present tense verb. Those are um, the, the major things that you need to know about tense in general. Now on the next page, page 30, um, 38, we're gonna go into some of the tenses in a little bit more detail. In terms of the basic tenses, we have uh, in English many, many, many variations of tenses, but there's really only six basic ones and there's really only five that you need to know for this test and there's really only four that will be uh, fairly important on the SAT. So the first is the present tense, something like I walk to school, uh, I am walking to school uh, would be another variation of the present tense that would be called the progressive uh, present tense or the ongoing or the continuous present tense. Uh, I walked to the gym, we're gonna call that one the simple past tense. And I have walked with a limp ever since the accident. That one we're gonna call the still going or unknown, unknown past tense, still going or unknown past tense. The next one, which we also saw on the previous page, we're gonna call the before the past. And the last one, that is just the simple future. Oh, that's not how you spell future. Do not spell future like that. Uh, and do not use a highlighter if you wanna to try to erase something either. Um, simple future tense. So the present, the simple past, the still going, the unknown past, the before the past, these four, these are the four that are going to show up most on the test. And it's actually these, uh, it's really these three uh, that ETS will ask you to sort of correct or choose between most frequently. So let's talk about those three in a little bit more detail, the past tenses. Um, so the three past tenses, once again, remember we have the simple past, the still going or unknown past. Uh, that's our second past tense. And then remember we have the before the past. So those are the three we're gonna discuss right now. So the simple past, when would we use the simple past? Well, we would use it in uh, a few cases. Number one, the action is completed in the past. I'm gonna actually highlight this. Um, so completed in the past at a specific time, something that was completed in the past ov over a period of time, something that was habitual in the past. I'm gonna go ahead and jump down to these examples so that we can see what these uses look like. So notice in example one down here, last week Scott attempted to jump the canyon in his car. So that's an example of an action, the attempted, that happened in the past at a specific time. It happened last week. So action happened in the past at a specific time. Number two, Sawyer lived in Brazil for three years. This was very similar to uh, one of the first questions we saw on the previous page where the living happened in the past and is done. Uh, Sawyer lived in Brazil for three years indicates that for three years in the past, over a period of time in other words, he lived in Brazil but he no longer lives there. So this was completed in the past over these three years and the action is no longer occurring. Example number three, Haley played piano every morning before school. Again, indicates that in the past but no longer, Haley habitually played the piano every morning. So those are three good examples of the three uses of the simple past tense. Um, how do we form the simple past tense? What do we need to look for? Well, most of the time we're gonna look for, actually I shouldn't say most of the time, uh, frequently we're gonna look for um, an ED at the end of a word, uh, something like attempted, something like lived, something like played. 
These are all regular verbs, uh, but in English we have many, many irregular verbs that do not simply get an ed in the simple past tense. Uh, we'll see a bunch of those in a moment. Other tip-off clues, what else might you need to look for? Well, again, those time words. You want to look for those time words. Time words that might indicate the simple past, things like yesterday, last year, uh, in the 19th century. So a specific past time. If you see a time word that indicates a specific past time, might be a good indication that the simple past tense is needed. Example four, go ahead and do it on your own. Press pause. In example four, notice we have our specific time in the past time clue here. So last year, a doctor, we would just say, removed my tonsils. We just add an ED, or in this case, just a D, to the infinitive remove, and we get the simple past tense removed. Now, page 39, moving on to some of the trickier past tenses. These two guys are uh, definitely a little bit tougher. Um, so the still going unknown past. Uh, again, there is a technical name for this in, in English. This is known as the present perfect tense. Um, the still going unknown past though, we're gonna call it still going unknown past because these two terms or phrases, I should say, these two um, names tell us what this tense does. It describes an action that either is still going on, started in the past and is still going on, or happened in the past at an unknown time. And you can see in this used when the action uh, area here, when the action started in the past, started in the past and is still occurring, or happened at an unspecified time in the past. So again, that's still going or unknown past. Um, let's take a look at a couple of examples before we go through the rest of this stuff. Down in numbers five and six, ever since the fire at the library, Jeremy has studied at the cafeteria. So notice that we have this has studied is our verb, and we have this whole sort of time clue here, ever since the fire at the library. So what does that indicate? It indicates that the fire in the library happened at some point in the past. And ever since then, Jeremy has been studying at the cafeteria. So we have something that happened in the past, the fire at the library, and then this action, the studying, has been happening ever since there. So if we lay this out on a timeline, basically what we have is we have the fire in the past. Here's the present where we are. And this action started when the fire happened and has been happening all the way up to the present. So this is a still going action. Then in example six, we have, we have eaten at the new restaurant downtown. Well notice there's no specific time clue in this sentence like yesterday uh, or last week. We just have this, we have eaten at the new restaurant downtown. This is an action that happened in the past at no specific time. So again, we use this form of the verb have eaten to indicate that the action happened in the past but at no specified time, no specific time. Um, if there was a yesterday at the beginning of this sentence, if this sentence had said something like yesterday, then we would say yesterday we ate at the new restaurant downtown because we have now been provided with a specific time in the past at which the action occurred. However, we don't have that yesterday. We have no specified time, which means we're using the still going or unknown past tense. So how do we form the still going or unknown past? We form it with these helper verbs. The two helper verbs are forms of uh, forms of the verb to have. And we're going to use the has or have depending upon the subject. Basically, if the subject is singular, we use has plus a past participle. We'll talk a little bit more about past participles in a second. And then if the subject is plural, we use have plus the past participle. So he has eaten versus they have eaten. Now the subjects I and you, they, oops, sorry, that eaten might have gotten a little bit cut off there. They have eaten. 
Um, the subjects you and I, they act a little bit oddly. Um, you and I actually take uh, the have plus the past participle. I have eaten, you have eaten. Um, so be careful of that. Your other tip-off clues are time words indicating that something started in the past and is still going. Very common ones are since and ever since, like we had in example five. Or if we see a time clue that says that something happened in the past at no set time or over a long period of time, uh, for instance, over the last decade, uh, he has been to Europe several times. That must be nice for him. Um, over the last decade. So notice this is happening at no specified, no specific time in the past, but over a period of time in the past, we would use the uh, has or have plus the past participle to describe those actions. Example seven, go ahead and do it on your own right now. Press pause on the video and do it on your own. So in example seven, we have Riel blank, an ardent supporter of the mayor ever since she heard him speak at her school. So notice what that ever since does, what that time clue does. It tells us that here's an action, and ever since that action occurred, something else has been occurring up into the present. So if we're trying to form the still going tense using the infinitive be, we would use our form of to have. In this case, we use has because the subject is singular. And then we use the past participle of to be, which is been. So that is an example of the still going past. Now, the before the past, this is our other tricky past tense. This tense is used when something happened in the past before something else in the past. That's why we call this the before the past. See what we did there? Um, now, in terms of some examples, take a look at 8, 9, and 10 down here. Most of the delegates had left the room before Senator Wilkins spoke. So notice, here's the simple past tense verb. Here is a word indicating chronology, indicating that something comes before this simple past tense verb. And here, the had left, is the action that happened before that simple past tense verb. If we lay this out on a timeline, we can see that in the simple past, Senator Wilkins spoke, and before that, all of these delegates, or most of these delegates, had left the room. So this is the simple past, this is the before the past. Makes sense. Then we have, I did not have any cash because I had misplaced my wallet. So again, lay this out on a timeline. Here, I didn't have any cash, so that's no cash there. And then before that, the misplaced happened, um, and that's why in the simple past, I did not have any cash. So simple past, did not have any cash. Before that past, misplaced the wallet. Last but not least, number 10, I had finished the project by the time of his arrival. Well, notice here, we do have this chronologizing time clue by the time. Uh, and then we have his arrival. We don't have, as we did in examples eight and nine, we don't have another past tense action. Notice that in eight and nine, we had the spoke and we had the did not have any cash. Those were other simple past tense actions. In example 10, we just have this arrival. So by the time of his arrival, we have to assume that that arrival happened in the past because this had finished tells us that the finishing happened in the past before some other past event in this case. Not another past action, but a past event. So here we had finished the project, or I had finished the project, and here time of his arrival. So the finishing happened by the time that arrival happened. So those are three examples of uh, actions happening in the past before something else in the past before another, when we say something else, we mean another action slash verb or 
event. Uh, that would be the the something else uh, that the before the past verb happens before. How is the before the past formed? It is formed with another form of to have, in this case, had plus the past participle. You can see that in examples 8, 9, and 10. Had plus past participle of to leave. Had plus past participle of misplaced. Had plus past participle of finished. So we use the had plus the past participle to form the before the past tense. Other tip off clues would be another past action or event and then time words that indicate chronology or sequence. And again, you can see that in examples 8, 9, and 10. We have another past tense uh, action. We have a time word indicating sequence or chronology. Those are very good tip-off clues that one of our verbs is going to need to be in the before the past tense. Down at the bottom, number 11, pause the video and then go ahead and do it on your own. So in example 11, we have organizers asked Victor to be a judge in the baking contest, a request he found odd because he blank a single cookie. So we're using baked, and then we're using uh, the adverb never. So we're going to say organizers, we have an, a simple past tense verb, another simple past tense verb. And then remember, it was before the asking and before the finding that he had never baked. So he found this request odd. He found this request odd in the simple past. So there's the simple past, the found. Why did he find the request odd? Because at some point before then, he had never baked a single cookie. So again, we would need the before the past tense here, and we form that with had plus the past participle. In this case, we're inserting an adverb never before the had and the past participle. That is the before the past. We are going to go ahead and do examples one through eight. I would pause the video and do these on your own. So in example one, we have since James Mardson took the reins at State College in 1966, the, fo the football program there, blank, just five losing seasons. Notice what our choices are, first of all. This is the simple past. This is the still going slash unknown past. So now what we do is we look at our tip-off clues. We have another verb here took, which is in the simple past. And we have a since, which is a time clue indicating that something started when Mardson took the reins and is still going on, which means we need has endured, which is the still going tense. So example one is has endured. Example two, while the guests, guests waited for the visiting dignitary to arrive, they had been or were treated to the music of a string quartet. So again, let's see what we have here. We have a before the past verb there. We have a simple past verb there. So in order to figure out which one we need, we look for, there's another uh, uh, verb, and there is a time clue. Remember that that time clue is a simultaneous action time clue. While means two actions are happening at the same time. This verb waited is in the simple past. So if we know that something is happening at the same time as this simple past verb, then our other verb needs to be in the simple past. While they waited, they were treated. So we need the simple past tense verb in example two. Example three, let's take a look at what we have. We have a still going slash unknown past tense. And then we have the uh, simple past. Oops. So let's see what time clues or other verbs we have in the sense. We don't have any other verbs, but we do have this time clue. The time clue indicates that something happened at a specific time in the past. What tense do we use for specific times in the past? We use the simple past. So Sarah worked at Banana Republic last year. 
Then we have the same two tenses, still going or unknown past and simple past in example four. But here we have a different time clue. Here we have ever since high school. And remember what ever since means. It means that something started in the past. When did it start? Well, it started in high school and is still going. Ever since means started in the past and is still going. We need the still going or unknown past tense here. So Sarah has worked at Banana Republic ever since high school. Example five, by the age of 25, Tiger Woods won or had won all four major golf championships and was already considered one of the best players in history. So we have simple past and we have before the past. So which one do we need? Well, notice we have time clue here. We have by the age of 25. So this indicates that Tiger Woods turned 25 in the past and at some point before then, before the past, he had won all four major golf championships and was already considered uh, one of the best players in history. So we need the before the past there. Example six, before he injured his tendon at yesterday's practice, practice Javier had taken or took only a few pitches. Let's figure out what we have. We have a before the past and we have a simple past. So let's look at our clues and see what we need. We have a simple past tense verb there. We have a chronologizing time clue telling us that something happened before this simple past. And what do we use when we have an action that occurred in the past before some other past tense verb? We use the before the past tense. So before he injured, he had taken. Example seven, if Melissa knew or had known about the recent layoff, she would have worked harder. So we have a simple past and we have a before the past. Uh, let's look at our clues. We have would have worked harder. So let's lay this one out on a time line. So let's say that here uh, she would have worked harder. So that looks would have worked. Oops, that was supposed to be worked. All right, that's getting messy. Hold on for a second. Let's get rid of that. So here's the would have worked. So that's in the simple past. Now remember, the sentence is saying that if she knew or had known before that point where she would have worked, so before the would have worked, we're looking at before the past here. If she had known before the would have worked, if she had known about the recent layoff, she would have worked harder later in the past. So the had known would come first in time in the past, and the would have worked would come second in time in the past. So we need something that occurs in the before the past here. Example eight, hardly anyone attended the workshop that was or had been so painstakingly planned. We have, once again, a simple past, and we have a before the past. Well, remember that here's our other verb in the sentence. That is in the simple past. We have to ask ourselves when the workshop was or had been planned. The workshop had to have been planned before anyone attended the workshop. So because that attended is in the simple past, and the planning took place before that simple past, we need the before the past here. Hardly anyone attended the workshop that had been in the before the past so painstakingly planned. So there are your examples. Hopefully you didn't have too much trouble with them. If you did, come back and watch this again or try them again on your own or do a better job of looking for time clues or other verbs in the sentence. Um, Tricky past participles. Let's talk about the past participle. So remember, the past participle is simply the form of the verb that follows has, have, or had. So whatever form of the verb you're putting in this blank, has eaten, have been, had wanted, has found, have learned, 
had, I don't know, whatever you want, studied. That's a good one. Studying is always good. Um, so whatever form of the verb you're putting in this blank, uh, that would be known as the past participle form of the verb. Sometimes what ETS does on the SAT is they are simply testing you on the correct form of the past participle. In other words, you might have the right tense, but you might have the wrong past participle. Uh, take a look at example nine. Pause the video, try it on your own. So in example nine, we have Derek and his sister, extremely close at ch as children, have spoke on only a few occasions since he moved out of the country. So notice, we have a since, we have a moved. The since indicates that something started in the past when he moved and is still going. So this speaking started when he moved and is still going. So have plus the past participle is the correct tense because we need the still going tense and we form the still going tense with have plus the past participle. The problem here is that spoke is not the correct past participle. The correct past participle is spoken. We do not say have spoke, we say have spoken. Spoke is the simple past form of the verb to speak. It is not the past participle of the verb to speak. So that's number nine. Uh, most past participles, generally students don't have too much trouble with them. However, there is a set of verbs that tend to be really sort of strange. So what we're gonna do here, uh, and if you wanna try these on your own, press pause, go ahead and fill in this uh, table, this chart right here. Um, we're gonna ask ourselves, what's the simple past tense of each of these verbs? The simple past tense of begin, uh, we would say yesterday I, and actually I'm gonna jot that down, yesterday I, we would say yesterday I began. Uh, but what if we wanted to say I has, I has, if we wanted to say that we'd be, we'd be really messed up actually. Um, sorry, let me get rid of that. Uh, I have, what would we put here? We would put, I have begun. With drink, we would say, yesterday I drank. We would say, I have, this one's sort of a weird one for some students, we would say, I have drunk uh, many glasses of water. Uh, yesterday I rang the bell, I have rung the bell. Uh, yesterday I ran, I have run around the track many times. Yes, excuse me, yesterday I sang I have sung that song on many occasions. Yesterday the boat sank and the boat has sunk. Yesterday I swam across the English Channel. I have swum across the English Channel many times. So notice that in all of these cases, we are going from an A form of the verb to a U form of the verb. Um, if ETS pat tests you on past participles, it is possible, probable, that they would test you on some of these past participles because these do tend to be the trickiest of the past participles. That is all for tenses. So remember what your main jobs are. Your main job is, first of all, spotting an underlined verb. That's the first thing you need to make sure you're able to do. Once you spot the underlined verb, you determine what tense that underlined verb is in, and then you look for other verbs or time clues in the sentence to determine if the underlined verb has the right tense. In terms of your past tenses, remember there is a simple past tense, there is a still going or unknown past tense, and then you have the before the past tense. In terms of recognizing when they're testing you on these trickier past tenses, just keep in mind that has or have indicates still going or unknown past, and had indicates before the past. If you see a has or have, or you see a had, just make sure that you have the proper additional tip-off clues, namely the time clues, to justify the still going or unknown past, or the before the past being used. Um, that is all for tense.